Hey yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to the Reflections of a DJ The Roll Podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got Jamie the Great in the building. Yeah. Uh, big shout to our brother, DJ Never Never Forever. Uh, it seems like we got like a 4 a.m. New York takeover in here. <laughs> <Big> noise, <bro. laughs> we got like the whole gang from 4 a.m. over here. We got Marty Rock in the building. We got Chachi in the building. Yes, and sir. then we have our special guest. And he's one of the premier DJs in New York City. He's been juggling, you know, up-tempo, open-format dance rooms uh, for, for years and years. And he's been centralizing his focus on EDM. He's always been on house and EDM. And he's really becoming one of the premier house dance EDM DJs in New York, the East Coast. And he's he's starting to slowly take over the country. I feel it in my bones. And while he's been DJing, uh, he's been dropping a ton of edits, remixes, and original music. I am one of uh, his biggest fans, you know, like I play a lot of his edits, you know, and uh, he's graciously texted me his edits. He's like, yo, he'll send me folders. And uh, I want to talk about his production, you know, uh, his DJing, his history here in New York. But uh, big shout to Rick Wonder. We got Rick Wonder in the building. What's good? Thanks, good. For, having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm so <laughs> glad we can have you on, man. This is a this is a pleasure, brother. Thank you. I'm actually like fanboying out. I told you guys I watched every episode for uh, for for years. So oh man, I'm I appreciate excited that, to, uh, man. Excited to be you, here. Yeah, I didn't realize you were like you. You know, I was I was we were doing some research. I didn't realize you were DJing since like maybe the early 2000s because you did some rooms that were like that that don't even exist anymore, like Sound Factory and the yeah. Roxy. My my first uh, DJ gig was actually at Exit. Exit. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So you're yeah, you've been in this for a minute. Yeah. Almost like what? Over fifteen years, definitely, right? Close yeah. to twenty. Twenty two years. Twenty two years. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> I remember Sound Factory and, and the Roxy. They didn't even have faders or anything. It was all like the Rain Rotary. Yeah. Yuri. No, sometimes yeah, they yeah. had the extension. Some, they did have the extension, sometimes. but uh, I remember the Roxy definitely didn't. It had like uh -uh. the nah. rotaries in it. Yeah. One of the biggest rooms at the time in New York. Roller rink. Yeah. Hell yeah. It was yeah. a roller rink. Yeah. Wednesday yeah. nights they had yeah. the roller rink and the DJ. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize you were in, in that scene yeah. when I. Well, when I, I started off that. doing like the house tea nights. Yeah. In the city, and then I went back to Long Island. Started opening for him. <laughs> Chachi, because uh, you guys kind of grew up, grew up together, or like or sort of. We like connected uh, when we were teenagers, and then um, he was opening for me at Teen Nights, and then we kind of went our separate ways, and then reconnected uh, in the mood swing days. Uh -huh. Well, like we both grew up on Long Island, and like Long Island's like Kentucky now, mm -hmm. but back in the day it was. <laughs> what you mean that? <laughs> well, it's just, please elaborate. Okay. <laughs> there's like New York City and Brooklyn and upstate New York, and then there's this whole other planet on yeah. Long Island with like pickup trucks and just, it's just, it's just a different, you go to like, it's the city, a really strange place, and then Montauk at the tip. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. But back in the day, there was like a huge nightlife scene in Long Island. Yo. Like every yeah, town. Yeah, for sure. Every town had a club and we would just, would play at all of them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like, how did you get start getting into the New York scene? Like doing the Roxy and doing Sound Factory. I My mom. Your mom, right? Yeah. Like, how'd you know that? She worked at Arista or something? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah before social media. She was media. your first manager actually at the time, huh? Kind well, of. <laughs> kind of. I mean, unknowingly your first manager. My my first club, my parents dropped me off. It was me, my best friend, and like ten girls. And how she old, walked. How up, old were you? Fourteen. Fourteen. She walked up to the front door and said, "Hey, I work at Ariston. My son wants to come. Is that okay?" And we cut like a three hundred person line and got comped and like walked in. I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Wow. It was a teen night. It wasn't like eight, yeah. I was, was like, she's taking you to a twenty. No, 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 no. Fourteen. No, thank like, God. Well, in like cool high school, they were throwing flyers on the floor, and I'd pick one up and be like, "Oh, what's this?" Yeah. Um. And just went like the first time I went. She's like, wow. "Oh, I made that." I'm like, "What do you mean?" So like, oh, I printed them. I know the guy who's throwing the party. I can take you wait explain that what were you what does that mean your mom's was making the, the flyers so my mom was the receptionist at arista printers yeah arista printers was the biggest um graphic design and print house in new york okay they did all the flyers i was thinking arista uh, records. records no 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 arista oh, printers okay. they did all the flyers for like every big night in new york wow so she knew just by like, them coming and saying hey can i talk to this designer can i talk to the owners or whatever she knew like bobby goodrich uh like every big promoter back right, in the day. because everyone was coming to her for, for flyers. Yeah, well, they were coming to somebody at yeah, the company, Harris, yeah. but she was the first person they saw. Right. So she was like, oh, I know this person, I know that person. That's and crazy. it kind of just got linked up with. And so she was just tapped in? Did, did yeah. was, was like your parents kind of always going out too? Were they part they still of the club? They're in their 70s right now. Yeah. And they go out more than all of us. Wow. 100%. Yeah. Really? Damn. Yeah. My, mom, my mom's 72, 
she pre-games with like two wines before she even goes out wow. <laughs> but like to party that's crazy <laughs> not not like an alcohol but just like they like they like to party yeah she just yeah. Gets warmed up right? yeah like my dad uh makes flyers like i make flyers but for like all these bands and stuff I love really that. yeah i do graphic design as well yeah yeah and my dad kind of picked it up because i don't know like we bond over shit he's like, not for hire but wait so nah. was he doing graphic design before you or you got him in no no he copied design? me no nah. well, he copied you not, not copying me like he yeah he, he was like uh like hey i see what you're doing here how can i start doing some shit i need to do some shit for myself but like with, thing, with right? microsoft yeah. paint or like you know like yeah. whatever <laughs> no <laughs> yeah yeah she taught himself photoshop nice. and uh illustrator YouTube wow. University. Basically. I can't even use. Yeah. I can't even wow. do that shit. So, so, so you have like club parents, like kind of a little yeah, bit. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Because like Nudia, Nudia, like part of the our podcast. Okay. Her parents are like kind of club parents. Yeah, they'll come yeah. support you. And where shit. they like kind of meet at the clubs, but they're always still they're still going out. You know, yeah. like they're I That's don't know if they're cool. in their early fifties like or something. Uh, well, her her dad just turned fifty because he came to the club while I was DJing for yeah. his fiftieth, and I was like, your dad looks thirty four, dog. Like, yeah, like, yeah, they're like that that generation of like club parents that like still go out. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. So like that's hard. You naturally being interested in the nightlife, it was just natural for them. It wasn't like something yeah. odd or weird. Or no, they were they've been yeah, cool yeah. with it since like the beginning and then like how can we help yeah you know like um you know we all started out like the beginning like doing like private events on the side and like hustling or whatever right mm -hmm. like a little bit here and there like yeah. high school parties and stuff my dad was going on the computer downloading everything from like promo only and ripping cds for me and being like yo you gotta play this wow i'm like wow what do you mean that's crazy you know and even like wow. 10 years ago when he was like in his 60s he was coming to me to like atlantic city every week wow that's and, like, crazy he would come for like the first hour and a half hang out and then play a little bit and then so did you grow up on like were they into like how, obviously house music and dance music? No, like what? Motown, Motown, Motown and all these stuff. You always had like the the CDs and um, what's that station on like the doo wop shop or something? That one I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, we used to listen like that shit all the time. And country actually. Wow. <laughs> so wait, so like you already had a bug. Where'd you get the bug that you wanted to DJ and do clubs and all that shit? So when I was a junior, well, no, um, sixth grade, no seventh grade, uh my junior high school and high schools combined and like one of the first week of classes a senior that i knew from like my town said something in like homeroom like buy my dj equipment it's so like me random i don't know why and i was like why like what's dj equipment or whatever and a week later my next door neighbor got the the purple newmark belt driven that we all had and that black and uh orange gemini mixer oh, and like four records and he's like yo i got this stuff we're gonna try it and he couldn't like to quote marty he couldn't like mix a salad like yeah. he was terrible yeah whatever but i kind of picked it up sort of naturally where like i can <clears throat> scratch a record and like you could make out a word while the other song was like like you know like basic basic shit right i kind of always picked it up and got really into it but you were always into house music right or you were always into dance music I kind liked of? kind of a little bit like I had like, I liked like Biggie and stuff like that but yeah. I kind of gravitated I was gravitated more towards like house music and, like the rave scene like the first my, the first club we were talking about before yeah yeah I had like the big parachute pants with like the strings coming out the sides yeah yeah, yeah. And, like brought my own glow sticks it was and like stuff a raver. like that yeah 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 like yeah. the shoot the shoe things um, uh -huh. the you know, the like flashlights the, and the yeah yeah, yeah like the all light that stuff. sticks and yeah I was like heavy into that wow that's yeah. the, that's crazy yeah <laughs> like I watched that movie Groove like a million oh, times yeah 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 like that that scene wow yeah. so that you you came up in that scene and then you slowly like because i left new york around 2006 okay and then so i always tell tachi like I, I i like i used to pop in and out okay of uh new york but i i didn't catch the late 2000s and and the early 2010s of new york as much i kind of i was just stuck in vegas like yeah. focusing on vegas okay but during that time when you're coming up I was just wondering how are you like tapping into the club scene and do to where you are right now. I feel like, you know, you you put have you put all this time into nightlife and, and DJing and doing yeah. all these rooms. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I've been DJing consistently since I started. Kind of you like never had a regular job. You just kind of no. Oh, I had a ton of regular jobs. Yeah, yeah. I just they never stuck. Even mm -hmm. school like never stuck. Like I went to I went to I went to college the last time just to get the ID so I could hang out outside the cafeteria building with my boy oh, sorry with my boys and hand out flyers that was like literally the only reason i told my parents that too i'm like straight up i'm like i'm just getting this for this and they're like all right cool he went to don't don't, don't get arrested <laughs> yeah so you 100 percent knew like i just want to be a part of nightlife i just want to be a part of djing and, and the clubs shout out to fast for though for that or did, was it that you just wanted to make music or what was i just it? love the culture the culture yeah like, what about it just everything like the 
the acceptance of it, the lose yourself, the you can curse on this, right? Yeah. yeah. The fuckery of being out at night, I yeah. love. Like just watching it, observing it, being a part of it. Not in like a bad way, being a part of it. Just like being a part of it. I don't know. I just, it's something I've always loved. And like I know it more now than a regular life because I've done it for so long. Mm-hmm. And even like my day job is related to nightlife. Now, like, like I, at the same time I started DJing, I started growing a graphic design business because my mom worked at a graphic design firm. Right. I would hang out with the designers and be like, "What's this program? What's this? What's that?" And my first party I DJed at I actually made the flyer for. Hmm. Um, so my whole career, it's like, you want a DJ? I would DJ and then sell you on a design. Or you wanted a designer, you'd book me to do work for design. And they'd be like, oh, who's DJing? They'd be like, oh, we're figuring it out. Be like, oh, I, I, I got you. And it kind of kind of built both at the same time. Even oh, to wow. today. Yeah, it's, I, no. I was, we were doing research and it said like your moms would even hit up the club owners like if you need a DJ, my son's DJing, right? They still do that. They're like, do you know so-and-so in like <laughs> Suffolk County? I'm like, Mom, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe. I, I, right. <laughs> oh, they like, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> You're like a Rolodex for all these DJs they think they can tap into. I got I don't know. So Aris is still around? No. No? No, not anymore. They, oh. they, they stopped a while ago. Yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering like as Flyers got like, you know, like when when was it like I don't know there has to been a time when they stopped printing flyers right yeah like 20, I don't know anything 12, about you know fifteen when nah, the social yeah. me- when Instagram became the flyer where you have to post it on but Instagram. it still took a little bit of a while yeah actually like, I walked out the club the other day and there was flyers on my windshield no way. well actually, I, I heard in Vegas God. they still do flyers for like Taj crazy. for Taj too right. Nah, I don't know for Vegas. That's for I like strip see. clubs and prostitutes. Though. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, but I, I would see like I would see a deep break or somebody like taking a picture of like uh like. Tal Vegas on like a flyer or something. Or maybe it's like a ticket. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe like a yeah, maybe ticket. Maybe they have them at the when you check in. Sometimes they have them like yeah. while you're checking. Yeah, yeah. In. Oh, yeah, yeah. But not like oh, maybe. passing out flyers. Yeah. No, not like how it used to be. Now. Uh, it used to be like street team. Now. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I mean, they still have these like in Vegas. They still have these like sub promoters that kind of walk through like you know the malls. They walk through like the streets, right. and they'll just be like, "Hey, you want to go to Tal tonight?" Free entry, and then right. that that ticket might have Beat Breaker's name Got on it. it or somebody on it. It's I, like I don't drink know. Ticket. No, it still happens because on the record, does that? Yeah, it's either drink tickets or two drink tickets and a free entry. Or yeah, something right. like that. but I never see them make flyers with people's names on the shit. It's I've usually just like a generic like nightclub thing in there. It's cheaper, but yeah. flyers. I mean, when we were coming up, I mean, like in the two thousands, I don't know if you guys, said, but it was such a. It meant a lot because it was. Yeah, like, I still have yeah. them. Yeah, I I kept. I have a big collection of like any press flyers, anything like that. Like I've printed them out and I have them in like little binders. I'm like mad organized. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, didn't, I never did baseball that. Baseball cards, but he has his flyers. Yeah, fact, <laughs> it's just me. You want to see a book of me here? It's like, it's like Helga's. It's like Helga's shrine of Arnold. Yeah, but himself. it's of himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chachi! Just late at night, I'm like. <laughs> I mean, it's like a sh- I have a, maybe a shoebox of just like scattered flyers. You have cool shit. Like you have that. your mixtape still saved up, so that's pretty. I have yeah. those old CDs. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, have, I have a shoebox with like old flyers and mix like yeah. mix CDs and it's and fun stuff. to reminisce. My yeah. brother just found my whole record collection. I thought I lost it. Like, well, not my whole, but like Ooh, we the, were talking the, about the big that chunk yesterday. of it. Yeah. 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 Wow. So wait, wait. With the graphic design, yeah. I feel like that's helped you so much. Now, Tremendously. Right? Yeah. Tremendously. Yeah. 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 How important? How vital is it? It, it's like I, I was kind of thinking, even when you're producing a song, you're already thinking about how the artwork's gonna look, or like, yeah. or how you know how you're gonna promote it. You kind of, when you when you kind of have a background in in visuals, and then you're doing audio and you're doing production or anything, you start already imagining the visuals yep. as you're doing them. Yeah. So it's actually like very vital to production because people who just make beats and make music, they almost have no vision. I, to, to a certain degree I, I they don't that, yeah. know how it should be marketed promoted they don't know really what the room should be but like when you when you start knowing the visuals and you, you have your hand in the visuals right 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 it forces you to think about like what what how am i marketing this how am i showcasing it's, this yeah it's, right it's more just like start to finish the entire thing can happen right away right like uh last night i went on ig live to show how i was like making my edit mm-hmm finished that mixed mess it exported it made the artwork posted it then when made a video for a story and youtube and all stuff but all happened in like two hours right so within two hours like the concept of an edit went from that to like it's on youtube with an animated video mm-hmm. 
within that window but uh, like thank god i can do that you know like yeah it took years to like figure that out but it takes years to figure it out but if you get your hands dirty with photoshop it kind of yeah. it like as you start moving towards like video editing you're like well i can get I, I can understand video editing because i know photoshop right 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 you know and it gets you kind of like to to like just be more self-reliant and like self-sufficient with like different apps and programs oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think it's one of the best things it's like for DJ to do, otherwise they got to constantly hire. Well, every person and every person is taking one to two days or three days to finish something. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you can constantly just churn out content or finish it on your own. Right? It's it's that meme, you know, like the meme like twenty twenty three DJs have to be a PR person, a graphic designer, video. Right. I, I took it literally. Yeah, and I was like, all right, like let's go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, all right, what? How many things you need to do? Like, let's do all of it. You know so you're I mean? wait, you're designing for other clubs too as well. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Still, right now, I'm like the creative director and in-house designer for like a few venues and DJs wow. and um, yeah, just stuff like that. Wow. I've done I've done er I've done anything from like um, like in the last couple of years. I don't know, like all the club quarantine stuff at Dinais. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. You did all of his uh, club quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah all the, the all those posters and stuff with the plastic on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were the, we were the ones that kind of came up with that. Like for like, I'm like, oh, let's let's do this look. Yeah, and then it kind of took off a little bit. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Rick kind of set like a precedent for like every East Coast DJ's like graphic design work, and I'm not mm. even like trying to toot his horn or <laughs> dick ride or not, nothing mm -hmm. like that. But like literally, like he'll put out like a rundown flyer, and I feel like oof. 15 DJs or go to the graphic designer like yo do this we, <laughs> nah we, for real we have our little group chat and yeah. we're like oh does this look familiar yeah. and it's just like Rick shit they wow. literally but, just forward it to their and, it, and it's crazy cause he's like he's honestly like one of my best friends in the industry like both of them and like I'm embarrassed to hit him up like yo Rick can you do this design for me Rick? I'm embarrassed bro now this month I hit you I'm like you guys need yeah, calendar yeah, starting yeah, yeah, you're yeah, off yeah. right I was like who needs calendar yeah <laughs> but bro he worked year, so like, he worked so go. hard that I feel bad like even like asking him for the slightest favor, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like for real. Like, but I, it, what a blessing it is to be able to have one of the not only the dopest DJs, but when I think he's the best graphic designer in nightlife, bro. How many how yeah. many uh, hours a week do you spend? Uh, you know, juggling all of them. Um, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Design work is usually like forty hours in a week. Let's say I'm sure it's more than that, right? Uh, maybe maybe not. But I don't know. Like if you were to to organize forty hours of your week mm -hmm. and just section it off. How much is going into production? How much is going to music preparation, your DJ sets? How much is it going to design? Can I mention block? one thing? Here's yeah. the thing. Rick uh -oh. is so talented yeah. that these intricate, unbelievable graphics. I mean, he could do it fast because he's he been doing it for so long, right? He yeah. turns yeah. them around. And I think that's um, the best part about him is he became proficient in uh, Ableton, proficient in Photoshop, proficient in Premiere. Yeah. And proficient in all of these high-end editing systems that he is so um self-sufficient it's just kind of like what he was describing before it's like the idea to the final product is like boop yeah it's so like, you're doing after effects you're doing uh oh yeah. you're doing animation you're doing everything yeah i i, I, I figured them all out he's and constantly a student of the game yeah and constantly evolving that that's why he continues to level up and the rest of the industry is like chasing him mm. to catch his yeah up. I'm <laughs> you do like we were just saying that you have like the best recap videos yeah bro uh, all day fucking yeah amazing. like your recap I'm videos like, are really a drone good shot i'm like how the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, from the drone shot to him like killing it but you're like, editing all that crazy. no 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 you're not i, I used to I, okay. I used to edit all my own recap videos yeah but it was just a lot and then it's it's interesting because like you know it's just a pain in the ass to set up a budget for a videographer to come to all like to certain sure. gigs and schedule it all you know yeah um but for where i want to be like it's it's like investing in your, you know any yeah. any brand or anything mm -hmm. you got to invest to promote yourself mm -hmm. you know it's like coca-cola wants to be cool yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, like whatever it is you, you have to have a certain level of like investment in yourself if you want other people to are you capturing like uh one gig a week through videography or at like least more than yeah. at least yeah yeah. yeah. All right. but what i do now is like i built kind of like a, a rolodex of videographers that know my style in every city that i have a residency at nice from like like instagram stalking let's just say so instead of me having to fly a videographer with me everywhere yeah i have like three or four in each market that i play 
that know my style, know what I like, know yeah. everything. Um, so it's kind of like, hey, like this past weekend I was in Indianapolis. I know like, are you available? No, okay, next. Are you available? No, next. but the, the, these people know what my Instagram already looks like, yeah, yeah. My, you know. And every time uh, I get a video done, I also ask them, and I'll, I'll, like, I'll pay extra, whatever, to get all the raw content. It's mm -hmm. so, like all their raw footage, all their raw pictures and stuff so that I can re-edit myself to run an ad for the next time I'm going to be there or, and, you know, I, capturing this content for whatever I want to repurpose it for later on, whether it's, you know, now TikToks are popular, so I can go back five years, take all my raw stuff, recut them and put them on TikTok or YouTube shorts is bubbling now mm -hmm. or whatever, 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 wherever the attention is, I can have something to get attention there yeah, if yeah. I want. But not Monday and Tuesday day, I'll spend like a good four or five hours on flyers for my clients. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I still do like all the bounces stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Palace, I do some some stuff, some stuff for Dream. Uh, like just whatever whatever uh, projects I have. Right. Um, Monday day, Tuesday day is like my main chunk for like five hours. And then after that, um, hang out with wifey for a little bit or, you know, go see my family or whatever. And then like 10 o'clock until 4 a.m., on days when I'm not working is when I'll do all my edits or mixes or music or mm. whatever. So you keep the same hours for production as if you were DJing, kind of, right? I don't like to go to sleep on nights when I'm not working before I would normally go to sleep when I'm working yeah. because I don't, I don't, I don't want to go... It fucks like, up your time schedule. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've never thought of that, though. So you, you try to keep the same night schedule like as your gigs yeah. for your production just for anything That's for anything yeah, wow. yeah 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 so like if i have to hang out with my like if i have a family function during the day or whatever yeah then i'll just know all right cool like i'll tell like my clients or whatever like yo tonight or like late late tonight that means you know like they'll get it like two o'clock in the morning right but i'll just work till like, i never heard of that that's interesting that's pretty interesting yeah, yeah. well I, do they want something fast or they want the best if they want the best you'll wait till tonight if you want something fast i'll make you something but it's gonna probably be garbage and you'll get it in 10 minutes right 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 it just depends on your needs you know mm -hmm. um, and so like uh you know when you're doing production because i feel like the way you've been handling production and you know i think it's i think number one it's hard to uh for dj producers to find like a direction a creative direction mm -hmm. because i feel like do I follow music trends? Do I follow what I personally want to make? And then, you know, if you're in open format or if you're in EDM, you know, you're, you're kind of like, do I make open format edits? Do I make EDM edits? Do I make uh, like deeper dance edits? Like, I feel like sometimes producers get confused, but what I've noticed is you kind of have three directions that you consistently push towards. Mm. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've kind of noticed it. But you do make these edits that some edits are kind of more focused on open format dance DJs mm -hmm. and then one edits and then another set of edits that are maybe a little more aggressive or deeper house or EDM. And then you have your own personal uh, music or like, you know, EDM tracks that you want to push yourself. So there's these like kind of three, three doors that you kind of like walk through or you know, navigate through. Am I wrong or is that, is that Kinda, similar? Yeah. yeah. Well, it all starts with what purpose does this fit? Right. You know, cause making an edit or making a track or whatever is cool, but if there's not a need for it, then why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. So it's got to like, first it's got to fit like a reason. Right. And then it's like, you know, is this, is the vibe of this going to be more for an open format person mm -hmm. or somebody on the fence or, you know, an underground more edit to try to get like into that world or whatever it is. Right. Uh, but the first thing is just, is this playable? Does it fit like a void or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, for example, like an edit, like one of your edits that was, was like, you know, Drake both, right? It's like a Rick Wonder. It's like an up-tempo <laughs> hip-hop edit. Yeah, yeah. Right? But that's more friendly towards an open format dance room, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it can go to an actual EDM room, of course. Of course, yeah. But it's almost like it's crossover. So like if I'm in a room that's hip-hop based and reggaeton, Latin and house and EDM, I can play that record, sure. right? Yeah. But it's kind of then in the middle of an EDM room, right? They could play that record, you know, and go off of that. Yeah. But yeah. then there's certain edits that I think are like a little heavier, like some of your own music or like some some remixes that are a little more aggressive, a little more deeper that would not translate to those open formats. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I feel like you're specifically trying to hit all three doors mm -hmm. cre creatively, but still kind of like also like, 
cater to certain DJs, so they play like, well, the open four mic guys will play this shit. Yeah. But then some of the the deeper EDM <laughs> motherfuckers will play this. And then if they play some of this, they'll feel more comfortable playing my own production or my own personal music, you know? That was one of the reasons that started making like the edits a lot was yeah. if you see a random person, a random name on a track, you're like, who is that? But if you if you play 15 of my edits, I kind of gained your trust a little bit. Exactly. Well, you'll you'll give one of my originals a chance. Right. And it could maybe fit into your set that you didn't, you know. Which was which is why I'm kind of mentioning those three doors. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you want... I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, well, I'm saying it's like... I think it's the best way for an editor or a producer to start gaining the trust of DJs. Yeah. And even, you know, because I feel like they're all lost on how to, like, you know, how to blow up or how to just get their music played. Right. But the way you've done is that you're, you're kind of like, I'm gaining the trust of open format DJs who may play some, like, up-tempo house. But then I'm also gaining the trust of people who predominantly do EDM or house dance rooms. And yeah. in, in the midst of that, if I drop my own music, they'll, they'll at least download it. Right. And they'll keep it knowing that Rick Wonder is consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that it might blow up. You know, even if it's not hitting right now, it might blow up in a, in a couple of weeks or a month or it fits into this room a little bit and I could play it. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's kind of exactly it. Mm. When did you start, like, kind of realizing that, you said? Like two years ago when we did the label releases, right? Yeah, because yeah. I put a couple stuff out on labels and it really didn't do that much. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what's the point of putting my own stuff on labels if they're not going to really care that much about pushing my music? Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to self self release everything for a year or two, proof of concept that I can really do like house, respectively, and like the way I want to do it, not just like trying to somebody somebody trying to jump on the bandwagon, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the edits kind of help it along the way i guess yeah, yeah. you know yeah i because i i was i was thinking to myself as i was like because i was thinking about the three doors and yeah. thinking about the work you've been doing over the past two years you know even like like the drake massive song uh -huh. you know like there was a great remix that you did that was like you know that was a little more aggressive mm -hmm. like it had a it had like a, a harder drop on it yeah but it like it worked out perfectly because the original is like there's really no room to play that in it's, it's not a not. hip-hop record and it's not a, like a respectable dance record to play in an EDM room. Right. So it's just like in this zone of like, we really don't have anywhere to play this record. Right. But with your remix, it was like, oh, I could play this in pretty much any up-tempo dance room and, and, and if an EDM motherfucker wanted to play, he could play it. It filled the right? void. Because it hit. And it's also, you're DJing in these clubs so you know exactly how to make these records hit properly in the club. Right? Yeah. Because you're in the club and you're in the midst of it. But I started noticing your edits two years ago a little bit more because they were useful. That's, you know that's, what I'm that, saying? They have to be useful first. Yeah. And like fill, like I said, like fill a void. Yeah. And then worry about all the other stuff after. Yeah. Like what what am I going to get from it or whatever. Right. You know, like one I just put out like a, two weeks ago, I think, was uh, Hungover something with Odd Mob. Hungover is dope. It's a new John Summit. None of us could play it in any rooms we play because mm -hmm. it's just that kind of song. Right. But shrink it down add a familiar drop and now almost any room we can play hungover until it becomes the next where you are or the next right song or it fades out in two months but at least for two months we'll have something fire to like you know work with it's interesting because i feel like the music that's being made now is like it's produced and it's and released at like 75 percent yeah and, and if it wasn't for editors and producers like yourself who are like finishing the other 25%, a lot of the shit would not be playable. You know, I feel like that. That's so like in the past, after the pandemic, it's like the music's kind of gotten, you know, it's, it's been in the middle, even like some of the shit that Tiesto releases. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't understand what this music is. It's like, it's kind of like top 40, like, I don't know, like, you know, like, target walmart yeah. music but it's like <laughs> it's on the cusp of almost it's meant to be remixed. edm yeah so it's just like what do, what are we creating here right you know right. what i mean it doesn't have a proper drop or anything it's almost just like a continuous energy yeah that doesn't go anywhere and if it isn't for people to remix it it's not there's like it doesn't have a purpose in the rooms that we're in yeah i know? think i think that's kind of the like look, look at all the technology and stuff at our disposal yeah. right now when you dj right like yeah even a straight up underground house set, they have that RMX to add snares and stuff. So 
if you make a track 75 percent you can add that 25 percent live on the spot mm -hmm. and that's what because if we're all playing the same 50 songs the only way to differentiate is your little flair on it so if you have an extra 25 percent to work with or like an empty part to like add a snare or if i can take this vocal and you know frankenstein it with this yeah it's it's kind of a new way to be creative yeah that's really why i started editing is because for the longest time in open format was we had like what like a hundred songs you like either had to play or could play or could get away with yeah so the only way to introduce more stuff is to like kind of sandwich it but, it, but it's also like perfect timing right because i feel like everything was kind of produced to at least 90 95 percent you know yeah. so anything you added was like it, it was could have been too much or it could have been like well i'll just play the original right but now it's like you're filling a void so now like you're even more needed than ever <laughs> But it, but if the music wasn't at seventy five percent, we'd still be at this. Well, we could, you know, we could use some of these edits, so we couldn't. But now we're like more dependent on it. Whereas, like, right. I could literally send you five songs and I'd be like, "Yo, can you make like?" <laughs> I've 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 actually started doing that where I'm going to certain producers. I'm like, "Can you make edits for this? Because these songs are big, but there's no no one's making versions of this. In some of the EDM and house, like they're not they're they're only producing it to seventy five percent." Even like some of the tech house, the tech house scene that was taking over and it, it was hitting, it was very empty. It was like, to me, it was empty to a certain degree where it was like, there was no build up. It was just this constant hit. And you kind of yeah. needed a build up a little bit on some of these. For our rooms. Yeah. For I think, our rooms. For, yeah. There's certain rooms where yeah. like, you know, everything's a time and a place for right. certain things. It's like <laughs> when that Maria Maria track came out, I love it. It was they, so weak. They, they hated it. It was so weak. But that's right? because we're thinking... This is a new track that just came out. It's one fifteen in the morning, and I want to drop it in Vegas. House version, right? But if you're listening to just predominantly beats for two hours, and it's five o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden the music shuts off, and you hear Maria Maria out of nowhere, when you haven't heard a vocal in an hour and a half, you're like, "Yo, it's the dopest thing I've ever heard." Yeah, you know, because it's the it's a time and a place right thing. Um, Interesting. I, I, I guess. No, but when I heard it, I was like, "This is weak." Right. I'm like, "This is like gonna." rip the energy out of the room but there's so much potential in it can someone make a version like right. someone needed to make a version for us to play prime time right right right. yeah, yeah. and then i'm just literally waiting to see if someone's gonna remix it You're or like, not rick what, what's up well for everything one, right? i put out i'll try like five ideas first and yeah. be like oh what's this what's that what's this okay this this makes sense but you wouldn't understand it if you weren't juggling open format rooms and like you know and and yeah. doing like different types of edm rooms and i feel like every there's so many different kinds of rooms now yeah that's they're like so specific now where yeah. it's like you know there's like f four different types of edm rooms oh you know? yeah you know where it's like and then there's like now there's like uh different kinds of uh, like open format rooms where it's like we want hip-hop and house no latin or we we want Latin and hip hop, very little house. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, or we don't want trap, mm -hmm. but we want house and hip hop and Latin. So you're just kind of like, okay, like I need to, like I used to have like maybe two, three crates for different situations. Now I have like, like I don't know, like like a, literally a crate for every venue. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm like this. This is so specific now. Yeah. yeah. But it's 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 really comes down to like you know the editors and what you guys are doing. You guys are like starting to make music for every room and every every like you know everything that we had to do it's it's really like life-saving for djs right now you know wow I, I, to be honest i didn't even like think of it like that and i didn't even consider myself like an editor until yeah. like like a couple of weeks ago like i, I mean like, i hate to like i hope it doesn't uh, like, no, no, diminish no. what you were like as a producer like i'm a no 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 no, anything, no i'm just, you know? just compliment me i don't know yeah. <laughs> i just I, I i like editing i just didn't i didn't plan on becoming like dropping like two edits a week and all this stuff right it was just it was it's it was really a way to push my originals yeah and to give me a way to play something like both in a house set mm -hmm. and not have to dip to hip-hop if i don't if i didn't want to dip to hip-hop at that time but i can still do something friendly for somebody and then over time just kind of built up more and more yeah yeah uh i'm wondering like because i was asking these dudes i was like yo like does rick want to have a patreon and they're like no he doesn't and i was just kind of no. like oh okay yeah. Um, I, everything's linked though. So like my edits affect my social media, which is affect my originals. Yeah. Um, which is why I drop so many edits because in order to like my edits are free, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part. But if you want my edit, you have to follow my playlist. You got to follow my Instagram. 
so every time I drop an edit, I'm I'm actually building my whole network right. instead of just getting like just flexing one edit. You know, it's it's kind of like more of like the bigger package. Mm. So especially like if <laughs> if you notice that I'm dropping more than one edit a week, that means I'm probably I probably have an original coming in a month and a half. Because every so that's time that's like I, your rollout plan, a right? Bit. So every time I drop an edit, in order to access that edit, you have to pre-save my track coming out without even knowing it. It's just a hype to click. To you, you're just clicking Spotify's cool. <laughs> like really, it's literally just Rick Wonder on Spotify. But when you click that Rick Wonder on Spotify, now you you're a fan of my profile, you're a fan of my playlist, and you're pre-saving my track when it comes out hmm. with one click. So if I drop eight edits or nine edits over the next month, and I get a couple of them to go viral. That's just setting me up to have a few thousand pre-saves. When my original comes out, no, kind of yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And then you just when did you start implementing that? Like a year and a half, two years ago? Uh like eight months ago. Eight months ago, something like that. I, so, for the longest time, we had Spotify play like every Spotify playlist. Yeah. Hey, check out my playlist. Check out my playlist, please. It's free. One click, two clicks. <laughs> Download my edit. Okay, now I have 15,000 fans on my Spotify playlist just because yeah, yeah. they will link to my edits, you know? So yeah, it, yeah. It, kind of, it kind of helps grow everything at once. Is it, is it hard to organically, like, kind of come up in EDM right now? I feel like, you know, everyone needs a cosign. Is it, it you know? Like, I, how does that I work? I, I don't... I really don't pay attention to any of that stuff. No? To be honest, no. Nah. I just... But you are trying to, like, you know... Emerge, uh, brand, yo, yeah, yeah. Brand, but I mean, what I mean is like, like trying to get a cosign or trying to like, uh, do I have to do this or I have to do that? I'm, I'm kind of yeah. just doing what I want to do mm -hmm. and putting like, I, it's even, even how like I approach my open format sets or like DJing in general. It's like I just want to do this, and if you fuck with it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. You, like you're, we're not meant to be. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it, not. A, I think over time, you, you know, like you, you realize, we all probably realized we're not meant to play every room. Like, not yeah. everyone was meant for us. Right. And at a certain point, you just go, okay. And that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it like, is there like, maybe like a perceived formula to enter the EDM world and become like a, like a successful EDM DJ? Uh, you I, know? Think, I think each uh -uh. each person's a different case. Mm. You know, like, look at like Jake Shore with that song and his weird antics with the headphones. And right, stuff right, right. Blowing up. Um, <laughs> and then, I don't know. Yeah. I'm making edits and a couple of like bigger people play them every now and then which is cool it's I, I guess like each person has their own way right you know and are you, you're not doing any like ghost production or any production for anyone no 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 have you been approached uh once or twice once or twice <laughs> yeah. anyone notable or not really no 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 no, no, no? no. just like hey uh what are you doing with this song like once i send it to somebody you know they're like oh uh, are, you, are you gonna put that out like that kind of like Test in the water kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm just kind of wondering. <laughs> I have, I'm not there you yet, know, no. You know, because I was talking to, you know, I was talking with Chachi. We, we you know, we're discussing kind of like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and some of the, you know, and and I honestly think, I think you're on a, I was, I mentioned to him, I'm surprised you're not in Vegas. Like, you know, I feel like you be a perfect, like, you be some perfect new blood for Vegas. You know, agreed. Especially I, I with love your to edits, play Vegas. You know, yeah. yeah. But I also, you know, I know there's a lot of politics and I know there's a lot of shit going on. I don't, I don't know everything. Do you know what I mean? But like, you know, with you and I, that's why I'm kind of thinking, what is the formula for EDM? And he, and it's, you know, I don't know if there is like a specific formula is. anymore. There isn't. You know, it's like because there was one kind yeah, there of there was, no, there, there was the one before, yeah, yeah. But but like, what, what was the formula back in the day what would you say like around the like 2009 2008 like, no it wasn't even that it was a little too early well i mean there was a formula back then yes but it was just really you kind of like ghost produce it for were, like yeah, a big kinda, dj I, yeah. I think there were a lot of formulas and like the cosine i think was a big one and just because we were talking about this person i, I think it's like a, a great example where like hardwell was the biggest dj in the world and then he co-signed danik and then there was another guy that he co-signed who i can't remember that was like part yeah. of the revealed camp but oh that, Zyro. it was danik and Zyro. yeah there yeah. it is um that was a lane hardwell was huge this is your guy so it's like cascade was huge this other person was on his label that cosign forced people through and then also that worked with other agencies where they were like cool if you want to book cascade 
you'll get him, but you also have to book A, B, and C yeah. to get to that. Yeah. I mean, recently, I think your song just taken off. Because, I mean, look at the formula. Loud Luxury, Ad Craze, John Summit. Like, they all had very big records, and they capitalized, or their management capitalized off of, like, Loud Luxury's been touring for, what, four years now off of Body? <laughs> it, might yeah. be it might be longer, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. Same, I think... same thing with Ad Craze. Like, what has he had since... Uh, he had a couple of good songs. Song. It was do it, do it's, it. Yeah, it's do interesting it. when I've I've watched Loud Luxury and I, when I hear their sets, it's like it's the most open format EDM set I've ever heard. Yeah. It's same thing with the Chainsmokers. One hundred percent. I mean, Chainsmokers is like I, I feel like it's almost like a karaoke act sometimes. You know what it is? I don't <laughs> know. Had, I don't. We had this argument. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's, al it's almost like uh, it's almost like theater. You know where like it is. Yeah. Where it's it like, is, you know, um, it's very engagement, like crowd singing, you know, Same that thing kind of thing. Talks, I, yeah. think, I think yeah. that's just the, na the dynamic of nightlife right now. Like, think about it. Like, when we all first started, for the most part, you had like a hip hop DJ, a house DJ, and then a lot of times venues had like an MC. Like, we didn't talk on the mic. Like, yeah. maybe last call. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Now, you know, DJs play everything or, you know, whatever it is. I think how things were and how things are now, too different there's so many niches now you can blow up playing r&b like i know you always talk about like r&b and ribs and stuff like that like, yeah that's such a niche thing where you but you be, you can become like a monster in that lane right and never have to touch this you know like i can have a huge i could one day have a huge <laughs> huge a huge house career and never be concerned with ultra or any of that stuff ever like it's just there's it so many different lanes for so many things now i think the only lane it, that's dying is open format. Everything other than open format, I think, is thriving. Yeah. Um, well, like, like, touch on that. What do you mean you think well, open like, format's dying? Before streaming, if you wanted to hear certain songs, you had to hear it when a specific mix show DJ played it on the radio, or you had to go to the club and right. wait for somebody to, like, drop it. But now, you know, if you want to hear Drake, you can push, push a button and you hear it or whatever. So people want that. Mm -hmm. So I think more successful parties are, like, when people know what they're walking door expecting because you can't please everybody nowadays it's impossible if i play 17 bad bunny tracks in a row the second i even play a j balvin track somebody's like yo where's the bad bunny i don't understand you know so just throw just throw a latin party you'll be more fun and go to a latin party you'll have a good time mm -hmm. trying to play ski and john summit in the same night yeah it's do like we can all do it but are they gonna like it probably not because that table's going to be happy when Ski gets get played. That's t that table's going to be happy when John Summit gets played. And that table's going to be happy when yeah. Morgan Wallen gets played. Yeah, yeah. And it's so, like, sectioned off. Look at the places that are doing amazing. R&B and Ribs. Okay, I'm going to go here. If I want to hear R&B, I'm going to go there and have the best time. Instead mm -hmm. of going to, I don't know, like a Vegas club and hearing R&B for 10 minutes and then have to deal with techno and then, or whatever, and then hearing right. R&B and, and 45 minutes later. You know, like, I agree and I disagree with you. I disagree. Yeah. So, the, in the way mm. I disagree with you is that I think what you're witnessing is venues failing to sell the right product. They're not bringing the right people into the room. And they're not... Right. They're not curating the room mm -hmm. for the night anymore. Right. So, they're making it harder for the DJ. Yeah. And what R&B and Ribs is doing is... They're not really focusing only on R&B, actually. So, like, when I, if you go to an R&B and Ribs, like, they're playing all kinds of music. Like, you could literally play anything. But what you're doing is you're curating the crowd and the people to be accepting of anything. So what you've done is you've created a room that respects the DJ and respects right. the energy so they trust everything about what's being curated because they know everyone here is going to appreciate and really listen to everything that's going on and i think what you're talking about is actually venues they're lazy mm. yeah and they're fucking up these rooms and mm. they don't know how to curate anymore so they're like well we want to we want to make money with tables but tables are slow we need an act let's bring the act and let's see about ticket sales so then ticket sales yeah. is conflicting with what the bottle service wants and then the DJ's coming up and they're like, well, we have this act going, but then an athlete's here. 
and right. you know, and everyone's here to see John Summit, but there's two athletes they want hip hop. Right. So like, and that's what's fucking up. That's the old old formula. Yeah, but that's then you the take old a place formula. Like, right. Take a place like, uh, have you heard of John Boy? Good night, John Boy. No, no. They're blowing up all over the country. Uh huh. Um, Chachi and I play all of them. Yeah. Um, it's only disco, disco. field right. disco. Everybody, it's packed every night, and everybody has the best time because they know. Right. When they go there, they're gonna hear disco. Yeah, it's so, all feel good. So maybe, but well, once again, it's the venue and it's the people running it, curating the party correctly. Right. Yeah. I think now, those things, for each genre, yeah, are way more successful in this climate. Right. Than. We're gonna open the doors and throw an open format party and let's ha- and like just make everybody happy. Play no, but you see, I disagree because I think open format is better than ever right now. I think it's better than ever. Can you give an example? I give you an example that I'm sure. be, I'm able to play way more different genres from different decades now than I ever was in the past ten years. Okay. I yeah. agree with that. You know, mm-hmm. so like for a young crowd, for for example, I DJed for seven hours recently in New York. <laughs> I was, I you know, and then I was playing B fifty twos. Like into like all t- kinds of music, old Rihanna into Abba into um, John Summit into like like create Dua Lipa into yeah. Doja Cat into um, uh, Technotronic. I played everything. Yeah. I literally played everything. I played and I was just and I was just like, oh my god! I played Afro Afro beats. I'm a piano. Yeah, yeah. I played dancehall, soca. I played dembo. And it was like it was there was no limitation on what I was playing, and I'm like, this is the best. 100%. This is the best time right now for open format yeah. because everyone, like, there's a generation that never experienced mashup, mm. or they never experienced real open format DJing in the in the 2000s. That's a good room. Yeah, but I think that's what I'm saying is yeah. that open format itself is actually in the best place it's ever been. It's the venues that don't know how to package it and sell it. And get yeah. the right crowd in there. I think, yeah. You know like, what I mean? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's why I said I agree with you because the sentiment that you're saying is like, these, like, you know, everyone's fighting to get the music that they want yeah. in the rooms, but that's the venue failing. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying the majority the of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's but like, I think open format is not the problem. I think it's the, op- it's literally the club operators that are fucking it up. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. horribly. Yeah, because I went to not long ago and, uh, performing okay mm. and they was open format like he was playing he was he was playing bad bunny and like, he was playing everything like, so that's what i'm saying yeah oh. and then that's what i'm like this is that's the one dude i'm like he's playing open format right like he's not playing just his hits was that an open format like edm set or just like because the the you had the latin crowd over here you have the white crowd the black crowd you have everybody but my, my so my my question though is at that room that you played and when played was everybody happy the entire time or was that person happy when that happened and that person happy when that happened? I mean, it, because it, I'm saying like the specialty rooms, when you drop a song, everybody likes that song. You like at the same time mm. when you're in a, even a well curated open format room, yeah, you play, you know, a certain style, three tables might love it. And one table is like, and then the next genre or the, like two seconds later, these tables will love it. And these tables like, you just, you can't keep the entire room happy at the same time, for a consistent time. I mean that's pretty hard keeping like a couple hundred people all happy at once. No, but, but, but that's it, what I'm saying. Like now yeah. in this day and age, the the niche or like genre catered rooms, I think, uh, work better. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I, I think the only place where it's hard to. But that doesn't mean yeah. open format is dying. No, no, no. I, I think uh, no, no. I think that I think I agree with what he's saying is that these, but it's being said wrong. Yeah. Mm. Uh, not to not to correct you, but I, I started you know. the interview and said I'm Polish, man. So yeah. I might not get. Yeah, I said that right off the bat. <laughs> no, no, no. We're on. This, we're literally <laughs> yeah. on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just dissecting and overanalyzing yeah. everything to a T. But another problem that's happening is that there's so many DJs. And so many DJs are getting rotated through so many venues. No one's creating a, an identity for any venue. There's no sense. Whereas, yeah. whereas if I had a club and I, there, I had a Friday and Saturday residence that was setting the tone weekly of yes. how the Fridays were and how the Saturdays were and how my Latin nights were or my hip hop nights were and it was consistent, people would know what to expect and there would be a rhythm and an energy. And you can have guest DJs that yeah. follow that energy around the residence, right? 100%. Because they're building it. But if I'm switching DJs every Friday, Saturday, if someone's different, this guy... So drastically. 
There's no identity. The crowd gets confused, and the venue fucked up. Right. This venues, so ultimately, yeah. These venues we know were like four Fridays in a month. The first Friday is Fifty Cent. The second Friday is Martinez Brothers. Yeah. The third Friday is Vice. Yeah. And the fourth Friday is Marco Carolla. Right. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, you, how are you going to make anybody happy with that? And like, if you come on a Friday, the first Friday, they like, oh, go, this venue was sick, 50 Cent murdered it. I'm back in town at the end of the month, let's go. And you hear more, you, what? Yeah. No. But you know how you make it work is edits. you have really good well, <laughs> edits, <laughs> but you have really good residents that understand the room, yeah. that understand, like, oh, okay, we're doing EDM, but we know hip hop tables are going to come in. And I know how, you know, this EDM DJ plays. So I'm gonna hit them with you know, hip hop early, and like keep them happy and and juggle it so that by the time the EDM hits, hmm. they'll they'll get through that. And then when I close the night, I can bring it back to hip hop or whatever. Yeah. But you don't have these like guest DJs that understand the room every time. They don't they don't get the room and these these uh, you know, there's just so many DJs. They think, oh well, let's just keep changing the DJs because then it's like spreading the marketing and it's keeping it interesting by changing these DJs. But they're also doing a disservice to the room because no one understands the room. And then, the cra- if, look, if the DJs don't understand the room, the crowd doesn't understand the room. Right. And the biggest problem is because there isn't really music directors anymore. Mm-hmm. There's Not only bookers. Bit. In open format rooms? No, it's just... No, anywhere. Play, yeah, anywhere. there's anywhere. There's hardly... like Unless you have a club owner or operator that has a vision... Music directors kind of kept it consistent, yeah. and they coordinated that vision with the owner. But now all you have is bookers, and bookers are just kind of working with marketing. Mm. So now they're just following numbers. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So no one's creative directing the clubs anymore, to a certain degree. At some point, like what you were talking about, consistency in the marketing became a bad thing. So it's like if you're putting on the same resident every week. I think they must think that the club is being like lazy or what have you, but actually from a musical standpoint, they're creating consistency. Right. Which for some reason clubs are very anti. So even now the support DJs are all consistently different as well. So right. not only is the headliner different, the support DJs are different. So there is no common denominator. There's no, and yeah, nothing. All those support DJs want their 15 minutes and they're or 15 also seconds young or whatever. Or promo DJs and they're inexperienced. So like it's, uh, it's there's no consistency. Drop yeah. no hands. Also, such a dis- <laughs> dis- <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's, there's kidding. also, there's also a disconnect that. between the booker and the actual venue. Like some of these bookers don't even set foot in the venue. 100%. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like they, yo, so like they a don't lot know of the, the time, vibe. a lot of the time, the bookers aren't like at the venue at all. Right. It's just some you guy know, in an office. I've had like DJs be like, yo, the booker said I didn't do quite well, but I didn't see them in the room. Right. Like where's they weren't there. They, they're working they off of feedback from like a GM or yeah. feedback from a waitress or what have you. Sometimes like, you got to go to the bartender and they'll be like, yo, what works in here? And they're like, oh, hip hop, but whatever. But it's not, I, it's, I, it's I mean, not it's only right. that. It, you yeah, know what it comes right. down to is that what you could have one guy that came in from New York that knows nobody at the club. And then a couple of waitresses had a slow night. And they're just going to say, yo, that DJ was, he, yeah. I don't, he was all right. 100%. Then you have a guy who's a local come through. They know everybody. And they could be one of the shittiest DJs in the world, but the feedback is like, "Oh, we love him." Yeah, you know, <laughs> talk we, about we, we love him. He killed what? it. There's a sense of discomfort. Yeah. There's a I sense like, of discomfort yeah. from management when they don't know somebody. Like off the rip, you already got the odds against you. Right yeah. off the rip. Because they don't know you, so they don't know. So you could be the best technical DJ in the world. If it's a dead night and you didn't ring. Like the the like there was no tables, the tables didn't stay, the bar didn't ring, then you sucked. Right. right. Which isn't fair. Which is like, you know, like we had a conversation about this. We have it all the time, but likability is so important now. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about it before we started, right. right? Like it's like it's it's just as important as what songs you play. Yeah. It's you know, maybe like, more important yeah. than even holding down the room. Just being likable or and recognizable and everyone's like, that's you know, that's with the so way so it's it's really like a flaw in the formula though. But someone has to see it, yeah. and no one's catching it. I think for some reason, you know, like like the likability thing. You mean? Well, no, I'm saying there's the a flaw in operations of the club. Mm. Like you know, they're, they're blaming all the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Maybe some people are protecting their jobs and all of this shit. You know what I mean? Which is fine. I get it. But I mean, we're having this conversation for a reason, right? Yeah. Because we're we are you know we we're seeing things because we've been in the business longer than yeah. 15, 20 years. And we know what worked and what does work and what doesn't. Yeah. 
I, and, I, you know, I think we're at a place where you know nightlife's been around for a very long time, and models that used to crush aren't just they just there's obsolete in certain certain markets or certain areas and things that need to be switched up. I've always said this: know? like I can't believe that nightlife hasn't exactly evolved. It's still loud music, blinking lights, and booze, like. It's the same thing. It's the same, same, it same, has, same, but, but different. Same, yeah. same, but different. I do agree with what you were saying before, that a lot of venues now treat their venue as an event space instead of a nightclub. Mm. Um, oh, definitely. And like, what I mean is like, great venue, and it's an even better venue when they have Tiesto, because people are going to come for Tiesto, but like, I agree with you, like, there used to be clubs where, just, like, you would just go on a Friday, you didn't know, even know who was DJing, but you knew the vibe that was going to be there. Right. Like an SL, or uh, an Oak on a, one Oak on a Sunday. Right. Or these these things you didn't know if it was Ben if it was yeah, think, Ross One or whatever. And that goes back to the Booker, bro. Like you know, like I think it's everything. A lot, a lot of these Bookers just do not. You can't you can't sell something that you never experienced. You know what I mean? Like I can't sell you a Lambo because I've never been I, in one. I think I think to say you know it's I mean? just the Bookers or just this or just that, it's just a different climate than it was. Right. Can I say one thing? I yeah. think what ha- is missing is a curator. Right. Which is a vibe curator. A hundred percent. Well, it's, by, it's, by what, it's what we, talk, we were saying with like a music director. There yeah. was someone who had a vision that aligned with the owner and yeah. and they executed it through DJs and marketing. Right. And they kept it consistent. When they saw a change in the market, they slowly changed it mm. by introducing things elegantly. You know what I mean? Tastefully. Tastefully. Yeah. Well, look, you at, know? look at like, like right now, the yeah. owner is the marketing director, but he said, I don't want to compete with the staple open format venues in New York City. Mm-hmm. I want people to come here when I want something, a different different environment. He's like, that's what I want to be known for. I don't want it to be this. I want to just, we'll trust. And it's, and it's been pretty successful so far, fin- like following a different a different musical and, and crowd format. And we had <coughs> meetings with the owner, meetings with uh, the person that books the DJs, going over the music that they really expected because they wanted to curate a vibe no matter who was DJing. So there is sort of like this, no matter what night of the week you go there, you kind of understand that what you're getting. Yeah, he wants people to come to that just so happens to have Rick Wonder or Chachi or whoever, and you'll hear Billy Joel into Diana Ross, into Drake, into whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, his, his, he's like, I want the musical format to be... When somebody left and they go, what'd they play? Everything. It was an iPod shuffle, but it was fun as hell. And I sung my, sung my ass off the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And that's like his thing. Yeah. Which, it, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a well-curated room, I guess. And, and people go to that room expecting that versus something else. So they don't hold up as many signs for, you know, instead of like, let me get Bad Bunny, let me get this. It might be like, can you play the YMCA or like something. But Katy it's, Perry or whatever. It's just yeah. something, yeah. I think the moral of the story is curation. <laughs> yeah, yeah right, I don't, I don't. but he also books good DJs. So whereas DJs will stick to their plan, to their plan, and they'll be like, "All right, I hit them with all this open format stuff. I'm kind of losing them. Let me hit them with something newer that they know." You know sure. what I mean? That's why I've been noticing that a lot more DJs have taken over uh, the bookings in certain venues, where they they like they're the only people who understand yeah. mm. the curation of how to curate a room with the right DJs, mm-hmm. and you know. And hopefully they're doing their job and like, you know, putting the right people in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I've been noticing that more and more and more DJs are handling the bookings and taking over all of that. Mm. More so. Yeah. And and there's no and there's no um there's no question why. They know these the music, d- yeah. These DJ curated parties like R and B and Ribs, yeah. Everyday People, you know, Tiki Disco. I was just gonna, yeah. Right? Yeah. All of these parties curated by DJs are blowing up for a reason or music enthusiasts like, yeah you know, music yeah. enthusiasts but it's like no one's listening to the djs so the, the, right. the venues themselves are trying to take control but they're looking at analytics social media analytics mm. like marketing and promotion people aren't even marketing promotional people anymore that we would have considered marketing promotions they're literally like data analysts yeah yeah do you know what I'm saying? They're like just looking at data analytics and they're just like feeding like, oh, we're not selling, you know, tickets or no tickets are getting sold. And they're just looking at followers yeah. and, you know, like engagement. Now. And then micromanaging the DJs. Mm. The I mean, we could talk, we could have a whole conversation about the micromanagement of the DJs in New York because that was like a whole era 
where it like, really oh, whatever yeah. was it around uh, there was an error in nightlife where uh, stood in the middle of the dance floor and goes Rick you suck no one's dancing to what you're playing stop doing this play this right now that to that level of like micromanagement right I got it mostly from <laughs> to the point where I was like I stopped working for all of their venues I was like I know what I'm doing I love you guys. They had this monopoly of like, you either fuck with us or you don't. Right. So they basically were strong arming DJs into DJing for this very low rate. Mm -hmm. And you either work with us or you don't. And they were like, you have to play this. You have to play this. You can only play hip hop for five hours. I was like, oh, we talked about it. We used to have to go on like rap caviar (laughs) and literally not even listen to the songs. Just like download the top 50 on rap caviar. Yeah. Just make sure you had an intro edit. Or like, you know, like, actually, I think we used to download intro and like regular because sometimes you want to just slam, you know, like certain yeah. records, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to slam. You got to like, drop it on. Like one. all I do yeah, is win. You don't want to blend that. You want to just slam that in mm-hmm. or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. But we would literally listen, like download the top 50 songs, regurgitate the, the 50 songs and they'd be like, all right, cool. Mm. It was a lot. But I think from their perspective, they'll do like, let's try to see all angles, right? What do you think they were going through on their side from their perspective? I was going to touch on this because yeah. I think it it's always from the top down. And I think like that micromanagement stemmed from sales or who they were trying to. They could have been trying to curate an, in, an evening that was really specifically based around hip hop. Yeah. And that was cool. But then they should have like booked exclusively hip-hop DJs where they were like we were a little bit more open format more party DJs more energy and they were like trying to push a square into a circle hole Mm. but the positive side I'm glad we went through all that because I think that made me approach DJing differently now and like 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 when trying to develop like my style like how so I look at it differently and I know like a lot of like a lot of the interviews and stuff like people talk about like what you're supposed to play at venues or what will work in a venue. And like to an extent you always have to do that. But I try to just like we talk it's like like that like a beacon. You know, it's like if you understand it, you get it. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm not meant for you. And that's cool. Right. I'm not gonna play I don't name a terrible song that's out right now. <laughs> you know, like pick 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 a song that's out right now. You know like I'm not gonna play that song because I have to play that song because that's in the top ten. Tomorrow night you'll hear that or the next minute you'll hear that. Mm-hmm. I want you to hear me and if you like me, you'll end up like loving my set. Right. And if you hate it, that's okay. It's 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 okay to not like my style. Right. Tomorrow night you'll like the person. And that's all good. Mm-hmm. If I bend my style extremely, not like, you know, everything has to bend within reason. You know, and there's there's limit you can't walk into a hip hop room and play uh, you know, a hard style set and you can't walk into a techno room and play Tupac, but like within reason. I think if you stick to like your style in a sense, you'll gain more fans that genuinely like really want to be down with you. But I just meant like within reason, I try to stick to like my style regardless of what I think I'm supposed to do or should do or whatever. Right. But I accept the loss that comes with that with certain people yeah, or so, fans or venues. I also, yeah, in a lot of rooms, not well, certain rooms, I've walked in and it, I've had a music director or an owner or somebody come up to me and said so tonight i'm like stop time out stop stop you you booked me because for a specific reason right let me do that and if it's fucking up pull me aside and let's have a talk right but give me like 30 minutes like <laughs> how do you know i'm not going to exceed your expectations yeah before i even get started yeah so, time out and if you don't like it never book me again that's okay mm-hmm it, 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 it happens one of my least favorite rooms that I've, I wanted to play for so long right I got booked because of my style in New York I played their version in LA <laughs> I forgot the story <laughs> and the owner is the one that was like yo I want him here I want you to do exactly what you do there here and I got abused I, I shouldn't be there <laughs> but <laughs> it's funny there's, there's two things you mentioned that that really uh that i want to that i want to touch on pause but like one one of them <laughs> one of them is like i remember there was a point in vegas when i would walk in a room and you know i i usually come early you know and i'm like looking and i'm checking everything out and right before i get on like right when i'm switching over i'm gonna play the first song 
I have three hosts telling me about a table shout out, a presentation, mm. and then I have to do like my intro and everything. And I, I used to tell them like, look, let me play for five minutes yeah. and then come talk to me. But, all, you know, like, let me focus on this intro, the presentation, you know, and like dropping the first couple songs, feeling out the room. Let me just and switching over. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys are telling me while I'm switching over, yo, yo, so we got this guy at this table, shot him out, it's his birthday, there's an anniversary over here, there's a ball, and I'm just like, yo, I'm not going to remember this. Right, if anything, right. I w I've been here for 30 minutes. You, <laughs> you guys could have texted me a transcript of what's going on yeah. that I could refer to. Right. I'm yeah. like, you think I'm going to refer to all those things the second I get on? It's going to sound horrible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then they kind of like were like, oh, okay, like, yeah, it makes sense. But it's like, well, Crooked's a problem. He's not a team player. You know <laughs> what I difficult mean? difficult to work yeah, with. He's difficult to work with right. when I'm actually giving them like a systematic approach right. on how to handle this yeah. correctly. That's fine. Yeah. But you guys should have enough staff <laughs> or you should have enough people to be that motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something that we discussed for years and years and years and we had to like kind of come to make peace with was that we're not meant for every room mm -hmm. we're not going to make everybody happy right and we uh for forever we were like we have to you know we have to work here we have to make everybody happy everyone has to like us they don't but that era you're talking about that hustle era sure is usually on the come up it's Absolutely. usually at the come up era <gasps> yeah and then i, I kind of wanted to talk about this like in your 20s and 30s you're kind of willing to eat shit to, to, for the opportunities mm. and you get and you, you kind of like you really navigate yourself but at a certain point in your career which is probably where you're at and a lot of djs are at you know you're kind of like haven't we built a trust haven't you understood that i am dependable mm -hmm. haven't right. you understood that i understand what you want and that's when i i really i think that's when the djs are hitting i'm gonna go where i'm valued stage where, like, if you don't value me, then go find someone else that you're going to value. But I'm going to only go where I'm valued. Because at this point in my career, yeah. if you don't understand, like, if you don't understand the value of what I bring, that's cool. <laughs> I don't need to be here and try to transform myself into something else. Yeah, I am what I am and I do what I do. So, no disrespect, I'm going to go where I'm valued. Right. Yep. And that's that was like I had to kind of realize that myself because I was beating myself up for for a certain amount of time because mm -hmm. I'm like I should be able to do this I should be able yeah. to do this room and I why can't I do this room and I just started realizing like oh you know I'm just gonna go where I'm valued you know and what then, happens? you become way more happier I was just saying you know what happens wow. a lot of time too is when it's like please book me please book me please, in certain rooms yeah and then like. You force yourself in there. They're like, uh, we'll get you. Like, whatever it is, yeah. you get in there. You usually don't have that much fun. No. But even if it's like maybe not as cool a room or not as whatever, or even sometimes not paying as much or whatever, but they're like, yo, Rick, like, we want to get you in. Like, you'll end up having so much more fun and probably end up making more money with that relationship, gaining more fans and stuff in the future than trying to go for that stuff where right. yeah. it's just not a fit. But it. I think there is a point where you have to figure out because, you know, I, I do think that there are certain rooms that I feel uncomfortable in and I want to be like, no, I want to learn how to do this room, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm like, and then I need to learn how to figure this out and I want to, I want to figure it out. So you got to understand when is, when the situation is, oh, I got to figure out this room and really like kind of rise to the occasion and be a better DJ mm -hmm. or when it's kind of like you know what i'm gonna go where i'm valued you kind of got to figure that out because it could be either one yeah, you we, know what i'm saying like, we have this constant discussion yeah, yeah. between like what's good for my career and what's good for like like my soul <laughs> and that kind of stuff and also what's like brand appropriate i guess or right. like you know like only headliner this like he <laughs> we talk about all the time because i enjoy a good like six hour set like Me open too. open to close i love it right because I, I look at those rooms like you can't always walk into the ring without doing push-ups in a workout. Mm -hmm. So if like my big travel gigs are like that's my 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 fight night or whatever, well, I got to hit the gym before I go there. So I like these nights where like I can 
play for five hours, six hours, and learn how to play on my piano and, and or like you right. know work in Afro house or test stuff out on like a like not a random night but like a less pressure of a night mm -hmm. where I control everything. Mm -hmm. Where if I fail a couple of times or a bunch of times in five hours, that's okay because I can make up. Like I better be able to make up for it or work it out. But then all that stuff that I experimented with and tried on Friday or Saturday when I'm wherever, I I, I worked it all out already. I'm good. Now right. it's now it's time to to show that out. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of totally look at agree. like my, my yeah. sets like that. I completely agree. <laughs> I'm on the same page as you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, mean, I've heard you talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, I I love those six hours. Like I did six hours. I, you know, I, I and I haven't done a six hour set. Was it like dead ass six hours? Or you it was like dead ass six hours. Oh, wow. It was nine to three. Wow. And then. <laughs> At three o'clock, the management was like, "Yo, can we keep going another hour?" And I was wow. like, "Okay." Like, and I was like, "Now it's about to be seven. Yeah. Right. And I was like, "You know what? I haven't played all of this. I'll just fucking keep going." And I yeah. and I went another hour, and then they could have gone another hour, and I was yeah. just like, you know, he was just like, "I'm just gonna put on, you know, the music, you know, whatever." Right. Yeah. But it was like for me, like nothing's gonna give me that level of accomplishment, mm -hmm. right? Especially yeah. in the beginning of the night when everybody i'm not i'm saying everybody from the operators to the staff thing i'm like it's gonna be really slow tonight like yeah. i'm sorry you're gonna be here i love that and then at the end of the night they're like yo it was crazy tonight yeah you know it's kind of like yeah it's That's like beautiful. it's such a yeah it's like you built the room and then they you build the trust and people stayed for like four three four hours That's yeah pretty insane i mean that just speaks volumes of your talent like i mean you, you i mean can't just that you, know, is you don't you just don't wake up and learn that no but i'm saying like even at like where i'm at right now like i i was scared initially because i was like oh shit like do i still got like the you know i was like going through the music like do i still got it and yeah. and I, when i was there i started like i was playing i'm a piano remixes and like some some afro beats and i was like the crowd was so great i was like holy shit like i'm actually aligned like my musical taste is almost aligned with this crowd, right? So it's not like I'm fighting them, mm. right? Right. And, and, and it, be, it like I'm telling you, it went like this. Before I knew it, it was like twelve thirty, and before I knew it, it was two forty-five. And I was like, you know, I was just like, holy shit! Like this That's was the most fun I've fun. ever had. And, yeah. and how would you know that I'm a piano stuff would work or this would work if you only did like a ninety-minute powerhouse headline yeah. set? You wouldn't know that. And you know? it's crazy because I've been forcing myself to research music and look up music. So, like, yeah. you know, like, for example, like, uh, I was actually talking with you, Alex. Shout out to Alex Heisey. He's over here. Yeah. He's our, our editor, content creator over here. <laughs> um, I was talking to him about the the track, the Tyler Water track. Mm. Okay. Where if I, if I don't have an Afro Beats on the piano crowd, I can't necessarily play the original. Right. Because it doesn't hit all pockets and it won't translate. It won't be a consistent beat for like, you know, like a regular top 40 mainstream crowd. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, it's like what always works for me with sexy and like keeps it like keeps the energy going, especially early in the night is new disco. Right. Yeah. So I look for new disco remixes for so many songs and I'm just searching. It was like a tie. I, I found, oh, there's like a garage uh, you know, a paradise like a garage band, uh, not a garage band. What do you call it? Just a garage remix. Garage, garage. house. Garage house. Yeah. UK garage. Yeah, it was just like a UK garage remix. Right, I was right. Like yo, I'll fuck with that. There's a new disco remix of that. I'll fuck with that. I'm forcing myself to find these remixes, and it's just like you know, for me, it's just it makes it more fun because I'm like playing the songs I want to hear. 100 percent. Yeah. And then you know, and then I'm and like the vibe is great, and I'm mixing it with the new Dua Lipa Houdini, but I'm doing another another new disco remix or mm -hmm. a, a slightly faster remix mm. and then i'm putting in like an up-tempo yeah. mike d remix like double time remix of uh body party sierra right you know and now i'm just kind of going through all these pockets that i love but it's like if i'm not putting in the effort to find these edits it's like it doesn't it doesn't help me at, at that all. point you're struggling i'm well, struggling I, because i'm just give i'm just using what everyone what what i'm getting from you know whatever like you know whatever the pools and stuff you mean? whatever pools, pools. well oh. some of these pools have it you yeah. just, sometimes you gotta dig yeah. but i i've been going on like you know band camp more and finding Me these too. things yeah band camp's crazy they've got everything edits and stuff i yeah. think soundcloud came back around yeah. Sound, yeah. Sound, soundcloud, soundcloud's yeah. the biggest There's right gems. now I think. Yeah. yeah i think yeah but it's like you have to make that the effort so when i yeah. when and when i do this and i'm like and i'm not even collecting 
look, I don't really have the gigs for me to be playing these songs. Mm. So I'm really doing it for myself. Do you like obscure stuff that like is... No, I just think, I'm always thinking like, this is what I would love to play if I was opening. You right. know? And this is what I would love the opener to play. Mm. And I'm it's just kind of like, you know, I'm and I'm trying to force myself to get these remixes. I'm like, you never know what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm collecting. It's like, you know, usually I used to... Cause, I used to download music only for headlining sets. Okay. And I feel like that really kind of, that's the worst way to approach music and, and DJing. Yeah. If you're only looking at it from a perspective of a headlining, big room, fist pumping, energy, cryo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you, you really become out of touch with every other room. Mm -hmm. And you're not... You're not, you're not knowing, you're not building like a library of other, um, a piano music or like all these deeper R&B songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, like. I mean, I, I, I guess that, that depends what market you're in because like us here in New York, like we don't really have many openers. Right. So you're essentially opening for yourself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because your job is to keep them there till four in the morning. You know what sure. I mean? So like, I feel like me speaking like from personal experience i'll hear a song on the radio and i'm like oh, that song doesn't really hit but it'll be great to add to my opening right, set right because i don't want to i don't want the you know because again this the staff reviews your performance so i don't want to i don't want to be on autopilot and play the same opening set every single time i'm doing open to close yeah so, so what I've, wait right. before before you uh, get in yeah, yeah so what i've noticed i used to download music like that in like 2013 14 but then five six years later that song became more big because the yeah. because the younger generation that grew up on that song that wasn't a big hit in in the big rooms five six eight years later they've grown up and they're going out and i have to go back and re-download all those songs yeah, but it's in your pocket already well, i think yeah, that's what's this, happening you know, right now I, you know yeah that's what's happening a lot with pocket. a lot of songs right now that like the kids you know when songs like songs from like 10 years ago that were hot weren't old enough to go out yeah. So now that they are, they're like, oh, like my older brother was playing that song or whatever. Right. Um, which you know kind of cycles back. Nostalgia again. is like really here. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is this is that era. But Go, you, going but you, back to yeah. the, the different the different genres of music and looking at like headline verse opening verse that. Yeah. I think I think like I I know I when I look for music I just approach it as what's good music because mm. a good a good song. If a song's good but it's not right for this, well then I can try to hopefully make it right for that but it's, yeah. it's a good song so it should have a place somewhere mm -hmm. you know or something um and just because a song isn't a cryo headline song now or uh you know whatever doesn't mean it's not going to be a good song later like look at that one of the hot what's if it's not the hottest song right now it's gonna be it's like murder on a dance floor yeah and we all that was an opening song at sl Huge. during the indie disco right stuff opening yeah. for you right and now 12 huge that's like my fourth song into my like big room sets mm -hmm. like a, a, a remix you know but like something like that yeah you know it's if true. i never downloaded it i don't even know that whenever <laughs> really <laughs> murder oh really uh, oh, there's some new there's some Ellis. new movie that every girl's go, go watch uh, go watch salt burn i haven't hey, watched it yet but dude, i haven't watched it either but i fell into that trap where yeah. i used to download everything and anything and i was ready for those six hour sets and then i started pretty much predominantly only doing headlining sets yeah and it changed my relationship with music it did even right? the way that i listened to music i was like i can't play this at work peep and i would go to the next song right or whatever. so like i, I stopped listening to like album cuts and like mm -hmm. b-sides because it was like a waste of time 100 percent. my exactly. time is limited plus i was like you know kind of doing what he's doing like content and this and that and right. i only had a limited amount of time so i only listened to headlining shit another thing now too is now that i've, I've taken producing a lot more serious in the last two years anything can be end up being a sample or a clip or a little ad here or whatever so like right i, I try to download everything um yeah i regret doing that though i regret changing. i regret that. it i think it was yeah. there was a certain era where it was just we were traveling so much Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think I was juggling like two businesses and I was doing I was so busy yeah. that I was even like, there's no point in this song. I started telling DJs like, what's the intention of this? Like, I can't even play <laughs> this. So why am I going to download it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, even if it's a good song, like, what the fuck? I'm, right. I'm not going to be able to play it. 100%. So like, I just was downloading just, you know, bangers, 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 bangers couple years later they're like this this song is popping i'm like yeah what song is that because you know you forget yeah sure. yeah and then they're like oh this like the kids are and then you're like holy shit i was going through the years i'm like i didn't download all this r&b all this shit all these slow jams yeah 
you know, and, and they're I'm, popular and then now. I'm playing catch up and I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to get it all now. Like, <laughs> yep. I mean, and I never did that again. I was like, I'm never going to be like unaware Too cool for something. of something like that shit. I'm trying. Again. So yeah, many I've, DJs have like a quality or quantity over quality mentality when it comes to building their library. You know, where they're like, oh, I have to have songs like Just In Case, Just In Case, Just In Case. Well, you're asked, what's the point of having two terabytes of music if you only play 200 songs? Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, me personally, I like having a smaller library. I only have mm. 120 gigs of music because I literally know every song in my library. You know what I mean? So, like, I know every song in my library, it, it serves a purpose. You know? So, like, in those marathon sets... I'll go back, like, even sometimes when I'm opening for Rick Wonder, like, he'll come in and he'll be like, yo, I don't know any of this stuff. And, like, the club is eating it up, right? Yeah. There's been so many times where, like, because I just know how aggressive as, as a, of a headliner he is, you know? So my job, like, even Chachi, like, he's come see me open for big names in, in Atlantic City. He's like, I don't know any of this shit. But, again, the club is eating it up because, again, I, I know, like, okay, I downloaded this song. It's a new song. But I know the headliner's not going to play it. But it's a brand new song. So that 21-year-old girl that's here early, she's going to relate and she's going to like this song because it's a vibe. You know what I mean? So again, I don't need a three terabyte library because I know every, I know every song that's in my library is there with, with a purpose. Just get a USB stick. <laughs> <laughs> I got those on deck. You know, at this point in your career, like I, you know, hopefully I'll see you in Vegas. I think I will. I feel like this is the year that I'm going to start seeing you in Vegas. I hope so. And on the West Coast a little <laughs> yeah, bit yeah. more. 100. But I, I do want to ask you, like, what are your favorite rooms right now that, like you want to play in or that you do play in uh, or like you've been there and you're just like, man, this is the perfect room for me and where I want to be, you know? Um, Like I think one of my favorite rooms is Cleveland, right? Hey. Like Cleveland's one of my favorites. Oh. Forward. Forward. Forward in Cleveland is, is, is just sick. Hands up, baby. Yeah. Um, forward in Cleveland, H HQ, I'm at. HQ2 I'm out on Friday AC that's one of my favorites it's like those it's, high energy it's that big Vegas rooms, yeah. thing yeah. I will say though that um, one thing like we don't really talk like I've really heard on the podcast is when it comes to the intros in those big rooms yeah. I don't like to start at a 10 no like, no start at like a 7 cause you're an East Coast DJ well, what do you mean Cause here we go. Wait, Whoa, here we go. Speak. What do you mean? Speak on that. So yeah. like, uh, like what I've noticed with West Coast DJs is that they'll go hard the first forty five minutes, and then they'll gas out uh, in the last mm. hour and fifteen. Is that because the earlier close times in the in like? Yeah. Okay. So and it doesn't. And to some of them, it doesn't matter if they gas out in the last hour fifteen, because the first impression was so strong. Got it. So that first impression, it, it hits harder. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But being from the East Coast, we never want we want to end strong. The lasting impression always makes we, more sense. In the to East me. Coast, we want to end strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, like, usually we'll say, like, we already know these are like you know 8.5 bangers, not right. 10 bangers, but they're 8.5. So let me hit them with an 8.5. Yeah. Because in the intro, it's almost like. I'm just creating a soundtrack for Cryo. And they're not leaving in the first yeah, 20 they're minutes. They're not going to leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me play some 8.5 bangers. Right, right, right. Let them hit them at a 10. Mm -hmm. Let me go a little left and see if they follow me a little left. Yeah. And then, honestly, if I really need to bring them back in the last hour or 45 minutes. You can do this. So you I can do that. that yeah. And I have all these 10s that I've just saved up. Yeah. yeah. But I, what I've noticed with West Coast DJs is they, they won't do that. They gas out. They'll, oh, they'll hit uh, it. They'll, they'll just go. But... They'll hit it so fucking hard the first forty five minutes, right? And then they'll just kind of gas out. And they might have like they might have like you know snippets of ten minute hits, hits, hits there, there. Right, right, it's right. It's not like how an East Coast like approaches it. Yeah. You so I, I try to look at it like if it's a two hour set, like yeah, two one hour main sets. So like you know I have an intro that's pretty strong, but it's not like the craziest thing ever. Yeah. And then I'll almost like do a second intro halfway through my set. Even like I have edits where it's like an impact breakdown, almost like silence mm -hmm. to like create some tense, you know, and I'll, I'll even tell a lighting guy like, yo, we're going to black it out. Right. We're going to do something halfway through my set, kind of like as a reset. And then that's when I'll start hitting with my nines and my tens from their point on. Right. Do you, you know? think that's because uh, New York and East Coast have longer nights? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's the longer nights, but I also think it's like kind of a Vegas formula. That was created 
around like the Tao Vice days when like intros and present like the first yeah, intro yeah. was like this big it was like a really big like orchestrated event uh -huh. yeah and you then, can still do that though you can still to an do extent. that yeah but i would get yelled at at the venue because they're like no play the hottest fucking song right now <laughs> wow and i'd be like bro Whoa. they're still wilding out right. like see I, now if they said that to me i'd just be like yo it's not on my usb stick i don't know how that song yeah no no but like I, and, and the <laughs> thing is i've seen the djs now like i remember you know when little uzi vert um i just want to rock yeah mm. you know they dropped that at 1 a.m and it was flat and and then, and then they went into mo bamba and then it was flat wow. and it was just like yo that's maybe you know you was trying to like create this energy but those are the records you have to kind of build up yeah mm -hmm. You know, like, those are the records that you can't just drop and it's just going to instantly, like, go off. Right, right, right. So, like, those aren't even the right records to drop at the one. Uh, like, at f for your first song. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's not, it doesn't even, it's not even conducive to, like, cryo or anything. Mm -hmm. right. So, I was just like, wow, they're still doing that formula and it's not working. And everyone's following this formula that we had to follow literally... 15 years ago <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's insane like yeah. if i had it my way i you know if we needed to do an intro yeah but most of the time if i go to a club they're like do you need an intro i'm like no let's just let's mm -hmm. just carry it right. through i yeah. find myself even in like the really big rooms like yeah. a, a, a forward or hq or like in new york like i love playing it like you know somewhere nowhere marquee nebula like those those I, I like yeah. but I like all rooms, but those big rooms are fun. I won't even do my intro until like the third song. Yeah, I want to like mix a couple, see what's going on, make sure everything's situated. You know, like all the settings on the CDJs because I I, I, stop, I, I use right. box so I want to make sure everything's like set. Yeah, you want to get acclimated. Make sure. Yeah. Yo, know, how many times you walk into a room, you, you do your intro and the mic's dead or right. like yeah. something, <laughs> you know, or something's up. I'd rather just. But I also I also feel like we we uh, we can blame that on um, you know like modern day like the process you know what i mean like you gotta remember a lot of these edm guys that took over vegas were literally just nerds that spent their entire life in a studio you know what i mean they never been to a club they they never know they you know they they don't know what it is to walk into an empty club and then by one o'clock holy shit it's the most astronomical thing ever you know they don't know that they they just know that okay i just it's time to go. It's time, you know, I'm well, here. it's my time to play and I'm just going to run through every hit. Like, they don't know what it is to build up. Like, they don't have, they, like, Rick started at 15. He started at 17. They don't know that there's a process in the night. Well, yeah, because they're not, they didn't come from a DJ background. Correct. They come from a production background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Producer, but DJ, again, the DJ club producer. suffers. <laughs> but it, the venue I, suffers. I think it's funny, it? though. I think it's funny after all these years and decades that passed. Like, you know, DJs, East Coast DJs, New York DJs, we still want to hold back and we want to keep the club yeah. as yeah. popping as possible mm -hmm. without giving them any of the hits. You know, yeah. like, and then when we give them the hits, we just, we want to melt the room. You know yep. what I'm saying? But right. it, it's always like this test of how far can I, can I make it to 130? Can I make it to 230 without, the hits. without playing yeah. the hits? Yeah. And then yeah. when you make, and then when you play the hits, it's just like, it just explodes. And then you're like, Oh, this is gonna be a five, this is gonna be a five a.m. night. Mm -hmm. yep. This is gonna be a, a four thirty night. We yeah. have been training for like a twelve round match, where <laughs> like the West Coast has been training for like five rounds, maybe. Or he something he like used that. to hear like my my Sunday schedules from like six Please. years ago and be like Any anxiety <laughs> what's wrong with you because I, I used to throw a brunch party every Sunday mm -hmm. and then you, you know do triples and you know bounce obviously like you guys know bounce sporting club yeah yeah, yeah. so I would play brunch. Then bounce and then one oak until five. So I start at like three p.m. and end at like five a.m. and I have to keep yeah. sight, like trying to Eight, push certain songs. Like, and yeah. the crowd would kind of move with us. So I don't like I don't want to drop a banger at the brunch that I want to save for oak. Ten yeah, hours that's later, crazy. Yeah. I used to do that. I, I don't know if I could do as much, but His I used headlining to. was not till five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been this I, three p.m. Yeah, I would do bounce. I would do brunch <laughs> from like three to seven go head like that was like the headline set and then i would go to bounce and do the eight to eleven eight to like eleven and then and then i'd have a break where i'd go eat and like change my shirt or like whatever and i'd go on at oak at one thirty and play till yeah. five no, the best on like a sunday night the best was that brunch when they would have to hide you because 
Because oh, yeah. they, they, they weren't allowed to have a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, so he'd be playing to like an empty room. They lost the But cabaret, the people in the actual brunch, like they don't even know that there's a we, we lost the permit, so they had me in the side room. Actually, it was kind of like this. They had a TV and a WhatsApp with the Wi-Fi and the equipment. And I would watch on a screen what it was like. And they'd be like, yo, where, where's Rick at? Sounds, I, sounds insane. <laughs> it's very New York. Very I, got, New York. I, got, I got insane one-off DJ stories yeah. for like... <laughs> just the craziest but those are the situations. things you do when you're trying to come up those yeah. are the things that you do and but yeah. it, it builds character it makes you you yeah. know actually you learn everything that you need to learn we you know? actually cut our teeth yeah we did the grind to get <laughs> yeah. to where we are yeah. i will say that west coast djs what i love and i appreciate about them is like there's you know when you have these hour 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 sets or these two hour sets or these smaller sets hmm. they really know how to just create like a show in the smallest amount of time yeah. yep. and showcase themselves. Whereas like, I'm like, Oh, I want to showcase myself in six hours. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, they can properly showcase themselves in like 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. They, they can blow you away in a 45 minute hour set. And you're like, and I'm trying to kind of master that a little bit so that, you know, it's like, how do I show myself in an hour? And it's kind of like preparing yourself almost for like, a festival set, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, one thing I do is I make, like, a mix twice a week mm. um, with new music that I haven't previously used in any mix mm-hmm. every week, like, two different mixes. I'll pick a, like, sometimes it's, like... For yourself I, or for, for... I release a lot of them, but then a lot of times it's just um, for myself. Wow. Like, a 45-minute, 50... The 45-minute, 50 an hour, whatever, long set. Yeah. That's kind of, like, to see... To kind of work things out in slow motion so that I can Im- apply that to my headline sets right? In the, uh, uh, later on. Because it's almost like you're forcing yourself to learn the music and to, to know how to navigate it properly. You can, and, you right? can see yeah. pockets. Like if yeah. I take, you know, all these songs and put them together and then I'm like, oh shit, like that could have like a cool acapella right there or like this song is dragging or whatever. I usually make the mixes and then play them back before I go to sleep. So I'll listen wow. to them um, and kind of go, sorry, and get the... Uh, get like the rhythm of them and stuff and then I know what I can apply to headline sets later on and like you know change things around wow I also I should have mentioned earlier I also before all my headline sets I try to download 5 to 15 songs like literally I'll go after like the the the, the networking dinner you know like when you go out and like <laughs> whatever I usually like try to schedule like 45 minutes after that right before my show to download like 15 edits that I've never heard before. Like, heard the preview, but I've never, like, heard them at the club mm-hmm. and never played them so that there's moments throughout my set, even if I only use, like, two or three of them. It's something that we experience together for the first time. Interesting. You know? So, like, it's not like, oh, it's, it's the like same. It's a surprise. Yeah, it's a surprise to me, and you and we can, like, experience that together and create some new energy that I've never had before, you never had before. Even if it's, like... Really? Yeah, I have, like, a weekly residency where I play open and close. Yeah. And I'll download... Like before I before I right before I call my Uber or like whatever enough time like I'll download like twenty new songs or whatever just so that the st- even the staff like you mentioned and people that regulars and stuff don't hear the exact same stuff from last time mm. um, and load onto my USB in like a testing folder or whatever. Interesting. That would be semi nerve wracking for me, but uh, it's anxiety you know? to the max. But yeah, yeah, no, but like yeah. very thoughtful of you. You got you got to be like <laughs> obviously like we're all comfortable to like if something's not working like read the room and get out of it or yeah. whatever it is but it's like it's it's fun it's yeah. like I don't know, it's, it keeps it fresh no, for no, me no. and yeah, them. yeah it's interesting yeah no 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 I, I think that's like i'm really that's really fascinating <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's yeah. like i'm i'm creating a potential problem for myself yeah. or I'm, I'm creating a, an amazing moment for myself well right? that's the only way to make things amazing right right it's like you can coast your whole life with any in any field and be good but in order to be great you got to like in order in order to create a moment where something can be great you're also risking that same moment being a complete fail yep you almost make yourself comfortable with being uncomfortable i guess so yeah. I don't know. he's like i'm gonna juggle these knives <laughs> <laughs> but but wait but but and there's a fire <laughs> but but if you juggle the knives think about how much 
people are gonna be like, holy shit. Yeah, but then you're like blindfolded. You're like, oh shit. Well, you can, you can you can juggle two tennis balls for him. Like, oh, that guy, you know, he's, he's a good juggler. He juggles two tennis balls. He's been doing it for 15 years. It's cool. Yeah. Or you can be like, yo, I'm gonna juggle four knives. And either you're gonna lose one hand, or you're gonna be the best fucking juggler yeah, that okay. those people have ever seen. But but that's a great that's a great practice to do in a room that you're consistently in. Right? And you're comfortable. You would say you wouldn't do that in like a completely new room. I do it in every room. Every room. Every room. Yeah. There's always wow. at least there's always at least two or three edits. <laughs> I, I went I went on uh, social media this past what was I at Envy mm, Friday, Saturday sa- Saturday I made an edit right before the car pick and put it over the club didn't even like listen to the full edit until like I, my airpods like off the dropbox link whatever yeah and played it like my third song in wow what's Just, that bro don't step on your balls my what balls <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that big balls doing that bro <laughs> read read any entrepreneurial book and it's always being comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah, right yeah, I don't know that's true yeah. mm-hmm yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to listen to the song first, though. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah, <laughs> skin. Give like, Crooked a ride. He's like, I got to listen to the song real quick before you drop me off. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd want to listen to the song first. At I, least you know? once. Well, no, it's not, it's not like I don't like blind download any random thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, like I'll check a pool like HMC or whatever and be like, oh, I, I never played this at it. I don't know what this is. This is seems to be popular. Skim it real quick. Oh. All right, let's see how let's let's see what potential here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I like that. You know, mm-hmm. even if it's just a breakdown and I like oh, okay. quick mix a drop into something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Else, just something. I mean, I've done yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. I thought you were just like, like He's being not, like, oh no, I'm not replanning my whole set. No, but I, I no, like, no, I thought you were just kind of like, oh, like these are kind of popping right now. I'll just download them and then we'll we'll listen to them for the first time together. Yeah. No, no, like I'll oh, listen. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I mean is, what I mean is, I want to implement stuff that I've never played in a previous set yeah 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 you know oh okay yeah like yeah, last that's minute great. that's a so great like thing. i'm pretty surprised too right you know with with them yeah, yeah. At the within same reason <laughs> right. i mean not having a moment together with you and the crowd is pretty uh incredible honestly yeah. it's like it's, it's been thoughtful. really cool for like different stuff it's you know? very thoughtful it really I mean, is. I, mean, I feel like the perfect example of that is that uh anglo and luke uh, at it with the uh, inner bloom and uh, the fray. Uh, fray. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he broke that record. Like, and I literally played that at live on Friday, and it went viral on Twitter. It has like five million views. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. Because I heard him play it, and like I was like, "Yo, what is it? I need that." <laughs> I heard him play it, and he was like, "Oh, here you go." He, he gave it to me, and then like I played in rooms like when like I have like really mixed rooms, and I'm just like, "All right, let me show love to the white people." <laughs> I'll play that. <laughs> I'll play that, and it it never misses ever. But, and, but then you got the hater ass DJ in the corner. I was like, "It's off key." Like, who cares? They who love cares? It. Who cares <laughs> about DJs? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a perfect example of one so of those funny. edits yeah. that but, he brought. But yeah, hopefully, like hopefully. Uh, West Coast and Vegas and stuff a little bit more this year. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we're really trying to work on like some more like festival stuff and um, yeah. bigger support yeah, stuff. I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to like more new music, more more new remixes, and you know, especially as summer's coming, I'm gonna yeah. be depending on Rick Wonder for <laughs> for some of those high energy, you know, day pool jams. And I've been working on a lot of Afro House stuff for the pools and stuff like like. I'll be great. Like remakes of yeah, though, like the Afro House like is like becoming the new like uh, kind of sexy but dark aggressive like burning man soundtrack that everyone wants to hear a little yeah. bit right yeah, yeah. 4am i appreciate the, the crew being here you know like taking over <laughs> the world podcast <laughs> thank you for having us <laughs> thank you for having us marty rock chachi yo rick wonder best <laughs> luck you, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the west coast my brother i hope sure. i hope it's soon <laughs> all right you guys thank yo, you. big shout to rick wonder thank you man. Hey. Thank you. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.